Aloha and welcome to At The Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King, and I am so excited to have you join me here today. You know, we always talk about conversations that are real and relevant, and today is no different. I'm so excited to share with you our guest for today. But before we jump right into it, I want to kind of talk about things that are going on with our 2020 presidential debate and race for president. As you know, there are $1.6 trillion worth of student debt. That's right, $1.6 trillion. And all of our presidential hopefuls are speaking about what they can do to make a difference. There are different strategies that they want to employ, and none of them seem to be the perfect fit. As a person who's currently paying back her student loans and feels like it's never, ever, ever going to go away, I hope and long for the days when that would not be the case, not for my children or anyone's children. Well, for one such family right here in Honolulu, Hawaii, they do not have to face college debt at all. That's right. Today's guest is the recipient of the Gates Foundation Gates Scholarship Award. Is that correct? Yeah. Join me as we welcome Ariana Bo to our show today. Ariana. Ariana. Ariana Bo to our show today. I looked at you with the hope of saying it right, and I still said it wrong. All good. It's all good because you are all good. Ariana, <laughs> welcome to At the Crossroads. Thank you. It is such a joy to have you here. You are just so bright and full <laughs> of hope. I'm so excited. I want to jump right in and say congratulations on being the recipient of not one, but two scholarships. Tell us what they are. Uh, yeah, so I received the Gates Scholarship and also a Crossbridge Math Scholarship. Wonderful. Now, I want to say the Gates Scholarship is much different than the Millennial Scholarship from Bill and Melinda Gates. Is that right? Yeah. Um, they transitioned from the Millennial Scholarship to the scholarship that they have now. Um, the Millennial Scholarship covered not just undergrad, but all the way through graduate school. And Gates, the Gates Scholarship program that they have now is just for undergrad. Wonderful. So you get the opportunity to work really hard and get another scholarship for grad school. That's my plan. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Well, I want to know more about you, and I'm sure our viewers do too. Talk to us about your early childhood education. Where did you go to school uh, for I elementary? To, yeah, I went to <laughs> Coco Head Elementary School. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. What was that like? Um, in elementary, I mean, were you an academic scholar in first grade? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that wasn't necessarily my focus at that time as like a seven-year-old, but I did, um, I was a part of the gifted and talented program that they had, which at the time was just kind of a bothersome thing for me because I was like, oh no, extra test questions, like I have to do extra work. Mm. But um, I feel like it really kind of set me up to do well as I transition into middle school and then high school. Wonderful. So you had extra work because you were gifted and talented. So there, I know about that program and there, there is some testing that you have to complete yeah. to qualify for that. Mm -hmm. And as you moved on, you graduated from elementary school and there was a transition. Yeah. Tell us about that transition. What happened in sixth grade? Um, so I went from a public co-ed elementary school and I started going to La Pietra, which is a private all-girls school for um, six, all the way through graduation, my 12th grade year. And it was quite a transition. Um, I wasn't necessarily used to all of my classmates being in different economic tiers than I was used to. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of came from a family that didn't necessarily have an incredible amount of money, and it was an adjustment being in a new environment where my friends had nice clothes and big houses, and I didn't necessarily have much experience with that. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful that you were able to see those differences. Um, I know your mom, and I know that she is a hardworking woman and provided a really good lifestyle for you. 
Just a little bit different than what your friends may have had. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So having made that adjustment, um, I think that it was, first of all, good of you and commendable for you to notice the difference, but you still seem to have turned out to be a well-rounded person. So you never had this temperament that said, woe is me. No, it was, it was pretty easy for me to keep a straight head about it because mm -hmm. I had a lot of friends, like because of my experience, not only in the public school, having a public school education, but also a private school education, um, I had friends from a lot of different social groups and mm -hmm. economic backgrounds and things like that. And they're all amazing. <laughs> yes, right. Because in the end, people are people. Yeah, it's true. Right. And so it's not always about the um, socioeconomic status. It's exactly. really about the heart of the person. Yeah. Yeah. That's been my experience. Terrific. Mm -hmm. So now you made it into this school and you were working really hard. And your academics, you seem to have a certain academic prowess. Um, what did it take to get into the school? And what made you choose that particular school? So, um, I'm going to be going to Bowdoin College. No, 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 no. No? No. Not just this about, one? No. Oh, just about okay. your 6th through 12th grade sixth experiences. 6th through 12th grade. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I misunderstood. I apologize. Um, I honestly don't remember very much about the process. I just remember taking the SSAT, which I believe is a secondary school placement program, mm -hmm. or placement test, um, and scoring high enough to get into these private schools. And genuinely, I chose La Pietra kind of less for all of the things that it offered and more just because it had a beautiful campus because <laughs> that was what I cared about as a sixth grader. <laughs> I understand that. So what was your impression when you first walked on campus? Take us through all the emotions and what it felt like. Um, mostly it was excitement. I had gotten a new book bag and I had decorated it with glitter glue and stickers. <laughs> and all the things that matter to sixth graders. All the things that matter to sixth graders. And mm -hmm. I was so excited. Um, I got on campus and they gave me an iPad, which was, I was just blown away. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, and being on such a, La Pietra used to be um, like, a villa that was owned by the Dillinghams, and it's a beautiful, be it's like a house. It's a mm -hmm. big, beautiful place. And I was so grateful to be able to go to school in a place that was so beautiful and had so much life, it felt like. Yeah. Mm. And you connected in some type of way with all of that beauty. Yeah. You fit right in. You're a beautiful girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So there you are, surrounded by beauty and nature. You've received a new iPad. <laughs> You've got this sticker glitter book bag. <laughs> and you're ready to get into school. So tell me, what is your academic um, uh, program like? Are you more inclined? Are you a bookworm? Or do you just have natural gifting? If you tell me you have natural gifting, I'm going to get upset because I have to study. <laughs> And if you're one of those, you hear it once and you've got it, that's it, interview over. No. <laughs> I bet you're that type. Go ahead, tell us. Um, I honestly didn't really, I wasn't necessarily really focused on academics at all in my first few years at La Pietra. Um, I kind of naturally was, um, I read a lot as a child and I had, and my parents and a lot of time, like they taught me how to count really early and how to read really early, and they were really interested in fostering my growth in that way. And coming into La Pietra, um, I didn't really notice a difference at first between like my academic level and anybody else's really, or anything like that. Um, I was more focused on making friends and having a good time mm -hmm. <laughs> as a middle schooler. Um, mm -hmm. And the academic part of it, the, when I started to focus more heavily on that, kind of came more as I was moving from middle school to high school, and I realized that 
I could use these skills that I had to make myself an outstanding student, you know? Okay. So what are some of the characteristics of an outstanding student? I don't know if it's really for me to say. I know that It must be. <laughs> I don't know who else can who else in this room has received any type of free money for education but you. You are more than qualified to answer that question, miss. <laughs> Thank you. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> I really feel like what has helped me the most in that particular department is really just kind of a I really enjoy learning just as for, the, for its own sake. Mm -hmm. And so in my free time, I kind of did my own research into topics that I was interested in. I read books about things. I, you know, like I said, did my own research about stuff. And in that way, just kind of being, not, not trying to be somebody's, that I wasn't, like just really leaning into the things that I already wanted to do that were mm -hmm. my own interests. Staying true to myself was like such an important part of that for me, part of being an outstanding student, or however you want to phrase it. <laughs> so then the answer that you just gave, which I think is very, very true and honest, is in order to be an outstanding student, you need to have a love for learning. That's what you said. Number two, you said you, and you read and became involved in things that you, and did research on things that you were interested in. Yeah. So you had a certain type of independence with your, or a certain type of freedom mm -hmm. with your studies. Yeah. And then you weren't trying to be anyone else but yourself. Yeah, I feel like that was probably the biggest part of it for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That was an excellent answer. Sounds Thank like you. a scholar to me. <laughs> appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's well-deserved. So you went through that process all throughout middle and then high school at La Pietra. And that school sounds really amazing. It's uh, the Hawaii School for Girls. Mm -hmm. And so you live there? Are you on campus? Oh, no. It wasn't a dormitory sort of situation. Um, yeah, so I was living with my parents. Mm -hmm. That's normal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. But you still had this very close knit. Well, how many are in the school approximately, or at least in your graduating class? In my graduating class, there were 28 students, and we were one of the biggest classes on campus. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it was a very, it, La Pietra is a very small school, and I think personally, that was. For me, one of my favorite things about it was because, like you were saying, it kind of created the, this community that I felt like such a part of, an integral part of, and I knew that there were people I could reach out to for support, and I had all these resources because it really felt like a community of people who were all interested in lifting each other up. Right. Yeah. And probably your teachers knew you on a, a much deeper level. That's true, yeah. I yeah. have become very close with a, a lot of my teachers over the years. I still back to my French teacher. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. So what was your favorite subject? If, you're, if French was a language that you chose as mm -hmm. your um, foreign language to learn, what was your favorite subject? Yeah, I would say probably my favorite. I really loved to learn French, but also I enjoyed English quite a lot. I would say that those are probably my two favorite subjects. Um, if we're going just by classes I've taken, I think my favorite class is probably dance, um, ah. actually. Not really an academic class, okay. but I really enjoyed. Um, one thing, like, the thing that I really enjoy about all of those different subjects is the ability to kind of make it what you want it to be. Nice. Yeah. And it's good that this school does allow for that. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to hear more from Ariana Bow. And we're going to talk about her academic prowess and what it takes to earn the scholarships that she has earned so she won't acquire the debt that so many find themselves with. We're, you are watching At the Crossroads. and We'll be right back. 
Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you. And uh, aloha. Aloha. My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it. Even financial health, we'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Welcome back. You're watching At the Crossroads with Keisha King and Ariana Bow. She is the Gates Scholarship recipient, as well as another scholarship where she doesn't have to pay anything for tuition. We are so proud of her and her academic achievements. Welcome back to the show, Ariana. Thank you so much. It is such a joy to have you. So just before our break, we were talking about dance and the fact that you can take dance or you were taking dance classes mm -hmm. at La Pietra. La Pietra. La Pietra. See, I'm just messing up all kinds of things today. All good. Apparently, I didn't get the scholarship and this is why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You are an amazing person. You are an academic and now we find that you have these other talent. Tell us about dance. Oh, um, I really enjoyed the I, I took two dance classes in my senior year at La Pietra, and it was my first time taking a real dance class since I was very young. So I did ballet, I think, and didn't everyone? With the, pink, I was gonna say, with the little pink <laughs> yeah. uh, ballerina shoes. Yes, yeah. we were all on our toes in those. <laughs> Amazing. So mm -hmm. what, in, what uh, drew you to take these two classes? Um, because that's a total right side, left side thing you've got going on. Yeah. Sing about balance. It, it honestly wasn't something I thought very hard about. It was offered as an alternative for um, PE. And I liked PE, but I was intrigued by dance because I enjoy, I've, I've enjoyed dancing just by myself at my own house. Mm -hmm. And I thought might as well learn a bit more about it. Wonderful. It's amazing that not a lot of people can do that. You're working with your academic side and then now your self-expression side or creative side. That right brain, left brain challenge is not always easy to kind of mix. So I'm glad for you that you did that. Mm -hmm. And as an aside note, I want to know, are you going to go see the um, Phantom of the Opera? Oh, I wish. I have a lot of friends who have seen it and have been talking to me about it. and. I would suggest if you don't go see it, mm -hmm. connect with Ballet Hawaii. That's another group that I work with. They do great things. You guys know Ballet Hawaii. <laughs> so go to Ballet Hawaii and you can watch some of the master uh, performers mm. that are participating in the Phantom of the Opera. So that's an aside. It's, it's not a commercial for them, although it sounded like one. <laughs> <laughs> but go check that out and that mm -hmm. way you can see that. Now moving forward, mm -hmm. I want to talk about how in the world did you get the scholarship How'd you get your GPA that high? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was, in, in terms of finding and getting these scholarships, um, I was aware that just, being, just paying for college wasn't necessarily going to be really an option um, for, unless I chose to take a gap year and earn some money or find some other way of doing that. So I knew that I was going to be applying for scholarships and things like that. And mm -hmm. so it was really self-directed. I Very, yeah. very good. <laughs> very good. I um, spent a lot of time looking for scholarships and 
things like that. And in terms of staying qualified for these scholarships, I grew a lot from the 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 community that my school offered, you know, mm -hmm. and taking opportunities to work closely with teachers if they offer and to really work through things that I was struggling with, concepts, things like that, and just put a lot of time and effort towards doing well mm -hmm. and succeeding at these things. Very good. So you took a lot of the pressure off your parents. I'm sure they appreciate that, <laughs> yeah. and they're very proud of you. But then in addition to that, you were self-directed. You knew that it wasn't going to pay for itself. And that the other option of taking a gap year might lead to venturing off into some career and not really ever having enough. And mm -hmm. that's always a challenge. There's nothing wrong with taking that time if yeah. necessary. But this route seemed to have worked for you quite well. Yeah. <laughs> so you came across that opportunity to apply for both of these scholarships mm -hmm. and you won. You earned it. You yeah. didn't just win it. This wasn't some luck of the draw like a lottery. You earned it. Mm -hmm. What were some of the qualifications that were needed that you met? Um, a lot of the, both of the big, bigger scholarships that I won had a GPA cutoff that I um, met. Exceeded. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I also was in, I found myself kind of from early on in high school being involved in a lot of different extracurriculars. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of different as that I followed with that, I became the president of my schools of one of my school's community service clubs. Um, mm. I was teaching sex ed through Planned Parenthood's teen outreach program. Mm -hmm. um, I did some sports. What sports? Um, I did air riflery, track, paddling, and judo. Not all at once. I was going to say, <laughs> when did you sleep? <laughs> when did you study? How could you do all of this? What I like about your story is that you are so well-rounded. You're not an academic who's only in the books. There's nothing wrong with those who are. But I think what has happened now is colleges and acceptance uh, committees are looking for well-rounded individuals. Mm. They want to know that you have other things that you're involved in. Because it makes you um, more of a critical thinker mm. when you have those types of skills. Would you not agree? I agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So you knocked that out of the park <laughs> and you received the reward, award, scholarships. And then you had to make the tough decision about what schools you would attend. Mm, so yeah. where have you chosen to go? So I'm, like I said before, on accident. Um, I'm going to be going to Bowdoin College. It's in Maine. Whoa, I just got cold. Yeah. She said Bowdoin College. I think everyone got a chill in the studio. It's just, how are you going to go from Hawaii to Maine? It's going to be an adjustment. It will, but it you've will. done that before. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. I have faith that I'll pull through. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> now, what will you major in when you get to the school? Um, yeah, so... I won't be able to officially announce my major the, okay. until I'm a sophomore because mm -hmm. uh, Bowdoin is designed to, is, is a liberal arts college. So okay. it's designed to give students a, a range of experiences and opportunities before they really narrow down into what they want to do. Mm -hmm. But I have been really, really interested in studying psychology since I think late middle school. Ah. And that is really, really where I feel like I'm going to be, the path I'm going to be following. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think you will be very good in that field. I think um, going from here to Maine, very unique choice. <laughs> <laughs> but this school, just like any other school you would have chosen, is going to be so fortunate to have you. Oh, I think you're you. going to offer so much. So grab your winter coat. <laughs> Lots of them. Yeah. I think you're going to need a scarf and a hat and some extra socks and mittens as well. Yes. But then get there. And then for any student who's in school right now, I want you or just starting, especially those who, like you, were at one point just starting high school, 
What advice would you give them to um, become academically successful? And I want you to look right here at this camera and tell them what it takes. Um, I think genuinely the best thing that you can do for yourself is to really follow what you're interested in and pursue those things genuinely because I think that the best kind of student you can be is one who is true to themselves and can decide, can, can be independent and self-directed in that way and can decide for themselves what they want and see the steps that they're going to take to get there. Fantastic. Listen to this valedictorian. <laughs> she speaks so wonderfully, very articulate and very Thank well you. spoken. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am very proud of you as an educator, but also as a mom. I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm glad somebody's got it out of here. <laughs> you did wonderful. And I think that it's really special that you've chosen Bowdoin mm -hmm. College because partly it's part of your last name. So that's an aside. <laughs> this is why I didn't make academic scholarships because I don't look at the important things. They're important to me. But then the other thing is that your school's initials are BU. And I think that is so wonderful about what you've done. So great job. I wish you continued success and we want to hear back from you. So anytime you're in town, you or your mom, give me a call and let me know what's going on. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, I am so grateful to bring you conversations that really matter to all of us right here in Hawaii and beyond. And our hope is to help reduce the debt one way or another. If we can stop students from accumulating all of this debt by earning scholarships, just like Ariana has done, then that's great. But if you have to take out loans, do it sensibly and work. Get a job. You can work while you're going to school. So many have done it before you. We just encourage you to do whatever it takes for you to be happy and successful. And just like Ariana has, Ariana has said, I got it right, right? Yes. <laughs> just like she has said, be you. Find what you love and then study that. Do the research and be you. Congratulations again to our guest, Ariana Bo. Congratulations to her parents. And we wish you the best. Thank you for watching At the Crossroads. Aloha.